Hello, and welcome back to the Cracking Fang YouTube channel. Today we're going to be solving Leet Code Problem 1396, Design Underground System. Right now, this is Bloomberg's number one interview question. So if you have an on-site interview with Bloomberg coming up, you're probably going to encounter this question, so it's definitely one to know. Let's read the question prompt, and it's quite long. An underground railway system is keeping track of customer travel times between different stations. They are using this data to calculate the average time it takes to travel between one station to another. We want to implement the underground system class, which has a function, checkin, which returns a void, which takes an integer ID, a string station name, and an integer timestamp. A customer with a card ID equal to ID checks in at the station station name at time t. A customer can only be checked into one place at a time. We also want to implement a checkout function, which returns void and takes an integer ID, takes a string station name and an integer T, which represents the timestamp. A customer with a card ID equal to ID checks out from the station station name at time T. We want to also implement a function called get average time, which is going to return a double, which takes a string sta uh, start station and a string end station. And what we want to do is return the average time it takes to travel from start station to end station. The average time is computed from all the previous traveling times from start station to end station that happened directly, meaning a check-in at start station followed by a check-out from end station. The time it takes to travel from start station to end station may be different from the time it takes to travel from the end station to start station. There will be at least one customer that has traveled from start station to end station before get average time is called. You may assume all calls to the check-in and check-out methods are consistent. If a customer checks in at time T1, then checks out at time T2, then T1 will always be less than T2, and all events will occur in chronological order. Okay, so we read the question prompt and that was quite a mouthful. Let's think about how we might want to approach this problem and look at you know, what our algorithm might look like. Okay, we read the quite long question prompt, and now it's time to figure out what we actually want to do. So I've summarized essentially what this question is asking us for into, you know, these three lines. So we want to implement the underground system class, and it's going to have that check in function, that checkout function, and it's going to have a get average time function. So we know that the get average time function is, you know, going to be providing us with a start station and an end station, and it wants to know the average time. And Obviously, we want to do this in as quick uh, a manner as possible. We don't want to be crunching numbers every time this get average time gets called, because if it's a potentially uh, costly operation, we could run into some sort of, um, you know, like exp uh, not exponential, but quadratic runtime complexity. If, you know, calling this function takes big O of n time and we're calling it n times, then we can get into really nasty, uh, you know, run times, which we don't want to do. So we want to optimize our get average time such that, you know, we can just access the data on the fly. So the way that we want to do this is that we're going to maintain a dictionary whose keys is going to be, you know, this start station. Uh, it's going to be a tuple, sorry, start station and end station. And what we're going to do is we want to maintain as the value some sort of data structure, which is going to represent the, you know, journey count. So journeys, and then we're going to say, you know, total time for this uh, particular journey. Uh, so total time. And the reason that we want to do this is that whenever, you know, they pass us a start station end station, we can simply look up the tuple with those two pairs and then get the journeys and the total time. And then to get the average, remember that to calculate the average, we're simply going to take the you know, total time and we're going to divide it by the journeys. And the reason that I choose to do journeys, uh, sorry, total time and journeys to calculate it like this instead of just storing the average directly is because I don't remember off the top of my head the formula for updating an average with a new, um, you know, with a new value, right? Whereas I know exactly how to calculate the average if I have the total time and journeys. Most likely, unless you paid, you know, very a lot of attention in your statistics class, if you even took one, will you remember the the formula for updating an average with a new value? Um, you know, it's not exactly intuitive. And in a high pressure interview situation, if you don't remember this, then you're basically screwed. So I just prefer to store it this way uh, instead of just 
trying to just compute the average so you can return it like immediately so there is a little bit of cost so you do have to calculate this but this way like if you don't if you don't remember the average then you can just get it from first principles so this part is simple right but you know how are we going to track the number of journeys and the total time well it's quite simple we know that we have you know a check-in and a check-out function so we need to somehow use this data to update our start and end here so what i propose that we do is we maintain a journey dictionary so this is our metrics dictionary storing you know the values for get average time but we're still going to have to keep track of active journeys right so what i propose is that we're going to keep a dictionary which maps you know a station so we'll say uh sorry not station we're going to say for a user so like an id this is going to map uh you know any active journey that they're currently on so you know where they tapped into the network at so some start station and some you know timestamp and we'll call this timestamp one so every time someone checks in we're going to put their you know id and their start time and the state uh and sorry the start station and the timestamp they checked in at into this dictionary and then when they check out um, we know that someone has to check out after they've checked in, right? They can't check out before checking in. So we know that they will have an entry in this dictionary when the checkout is called. Cause you know, the, the problem statement basically told us that we can be guaranteed the input will be valid. We don't have to worry about someone trying to check out before they've checked in. Anyway, they check out and we know that their ID is going to be in here. So what we can do is we now have, you know, our pair here, right? We now know where they started. And the checkout function will tell us where they ended. So now we'll have this pair start end. And what we can do is we can compute the difference because this, you know, this timestamp is going to represent when they checked out. So we'll call it timestamp two. And we'll say, you know, the difference is going to be the time taken, right? Uh, for that journey, that particular journey. So what we can then do is we can add this time taken to you know our key here in the metrics dictionary and you know we'll add it to this value here so we'll add you know add it to that value and then we can add one to the journeys right because we've just made a new journey and we can simply uh, uh, increase our journeys count here and we're going to do that for every check-in and check-out pair that we get now remember that when we check out what we need to do is you know if someone makes another journey for that id then they're going to have an, um, you know, something in here and we don't want to be overriding keys. We just want to get rid of um, someone's data as soon as they check out. So when they check out, we're actually going to wipe them from this dictionary to prevent the size from getting too big. We could, you know, if someone just makes one journey, if a lot of people do that, then this dictionary can get really, really large. And, you know, it could potentially, you know, cause us to run out of memory. So what we want to do is when someone checks out, wipe their key from this dictionary. And then that way we can keep the dictionary size small. And then when they check in again, then we'll just add it. And then every time they check out, we just simply wipe it. So that way this dictionary will only be holding active journeys, right? Um, where like a journey it's in progress. And that's basically the approach that we want to solve uh, this question with, right? We want to, you know, use this active journeys to keep track of you know a journey and then when they check out we're going to use the data you know the difference between the timestamp that they checked out at and the timestamp they started at and we can append that to the data that we have for that metric so that way when we call get average time we can do it in constant time where we just have to fetch the entry from the dictionary and then just compute the average and return that which is going to be a constant time as opposed to if we just stored all the journeys and then we had to crunch them on the fly every time we asked for get average time which would obviously you know be a big o of n operation and we don't want to do that so uh what we want to do is that approach now let's go into the code editor and put this into code i'll see you there we're back in the code editor let's write the code Remember that we said that we're going to be working with two dictionaries to actually solve our problem. So let's define those now. So remember, we're going to say one is going to keep track of the active uh, journey. So we're going to say self.journey dictionary is just going to be an empty dictionary. And we're going to say self.metric uh, dictionary is going to be another empty dictionary. So let's handle the check in. So what do we want to do when we check in? Well, it's quite simple. We just want to put into our journey dictionary the ID is the key and a tuple representing the station name and the timestamp they checked in at 
as the value. So all we have to do is say self dot journey dictionary oops, dict of ID is going to be equal to a tuple with the station name and timestamp. And this is a, you know, a function that returns none. So we don't actually have to return anything. We can just return after we've done that. Okay, so now it's time for the checkout. And remember, uh, we don't have to worry about someone trying to check out before they've checked in. So we can always assume that our input here is going to be valid. So what do we want to do? Well, we need to calculate the difference between the time they checked out and the time they checked in. So we can update our, you know, metric dictionary uh, with the correct, you know, journey time for that particular, you know, start station end station pair. So let's grab the values out of the dictionary of what station they started at and what time they started at. So we're going to say start station and start time is going to equal to self dot journey dictionary oops, for that particular ID. So we fetch that data. And now remember, we want to get we want only this journey dictionary to store active journey. So someone's checked out, which means that their journey is no longer active. They're out of the, the underground system. We don't have to worry about them anymore. So we can simply delete that key from the journey dictionary. And remember, you know, even though you don't have to do this, the reason that we do it is because we want to keep our memory costs down. We don't want to be storing people who are already out of the system. If a lot of people just make one off journeys and they're not like active people that are constantly using the system, then our journey dictionary is going to grow in size and we could potentially run out of memory. So this is like a little, you know, implementation detail that you'll want to do and your interviewer might press you be like, well, you know, what happens if the journey dick gets too big and it blows up? What can we do then? So, you know, we want to get rid of this key for that reason. So we're going to say delete self dot journey dictionary for that ID. So we're going to wipe that ID from the dictionary. So we're not storing that in memory anymore. Now what we want to do is we want to update our metric dictionary with basically the time for this um, you know, start station end station combo. Now, it may be the case that this particular journey was the first time it was ever seen. So what we want to do in this case is check whether or not that journey has been made before. And if it is, then we can simply increment, you know, the values for that uh, journey. Otherwise, we actually have to add it to the dictionary. So we're going to say if start station uh, station name, which I guess represents the end station here, um, in self dot metric dict. So basically, if that journey has been made before, then we just want to increment the total journeys, and we want to increment the you know total travel time for that particular um, pair uh, in our dictionary. So we're going to say self dot metric dictionary. And the key, remember, will be the start station and the end station, which is, again, station name here. And, you know, we're going to be storing it in the format of it's going to be, um, you know, total journeys. So it's going to be a list here, total journeys and then total travel time. So the first uh, the zeroth index will be the total journeys and the first index will be the total travel time. So we want to increment the you know total journeys by one because we've just made a new journey and then we want to append or increment sorry the total travel time by the you know travel time we had so we're going to again increment that value for the pair here and this time it's the first index and this time we want to add the difference between the current time uh, in checkout which is our checkout time so t minus our you know start time for the journey start time and that difference is going to be the time that uh, our journey took so we're going to add that to the total travel time okay so that's the case when we've made that journey before if not this is going to be the first journey so we can simply initialize our you know metric dictionary for that pair so we're going to say start station and station name and what we're going to do is we're going to initialize it. So we've never seen it before, which means that this was the first journey. So there's one journey made and the total travel time is just going to be T minus the start time. And that's all we have to do. And remember, this function is returning none. So we would just return at the end of it here. Now, all we have to do is implement the get travel time or the average time. So 
we can easily look this up from our dictionary. So we're going to say the, you know, journey count and the total journey time is going to equal to what? So self.metric dictionary for our, our pair here. So we're going to say for our start station, uh, end station pair. Whoops. Uh, so we're going to extract those values from the dictionary. And remember, we need to calculate the average now. So all we want to do is simply return the total journey time, whoops, journey time divided by the journey count. And that will return us the average, right? Because the total time spent traveling divided by the total amount of journeys will be the average amount of time per journey. So this is going to be how you solve this problem. Let's submit it. Hopefully we haven't made a bug somewhere because there is a bunch of things. Okay, cool. So this function, uh, sorry, we solved the question. And let's think about the time and space complexity. Well, the time complexity is going to be big O of 1. Why is that? Well, well, check in. All we're doing is adding a key to a dictionary, which we know happens in constant time. So our check in function is big O of 1. Check out, what are we doing? We're getting a key from a, value, uh, from a dictionary, which is going to be constant time. We're deleting a key from a dictionary, which is also constant time. And then we're, you know, checking to see if something exists in a dictionary. Again, this is constant time. Uh, and then we are simply either setting a key in a dictionary, still constant time, or incrementing, you know, a value for a key, which again is going to happen in constant time. So every operation in checkout still happens in big O of one time. And then for the get average time, you know, these values are just uh, look up by a key into a dictionary, which is big O of one. And then computing this is also going to be a big O of one computation. So our time complexity is actually big O of one for every single operation here uh, in our class. What about the space complexity? Well, we're storing two dictionaries. So let's think about you know the possible um, you know uh, sorry what is it going to be the the possible space here. So we know that the, the journey dictionary will be tracking all active journeys. So we can think about this as having big O of P space, where P is the no number of like total active journeys at any one point. And what the metric dictionary is storing is it's storing all the you know start station, end station um, combinations. So if we had S stations, then you know there's S times S minus one. Um, you know pairs here that we could work with uh, So that you know, that'll be the the worst case that we'd be storing here. So obviously this is going to be asymptotically just s squared. So that would be what our um, uh, Metric dictionary could be storing so basically all the possible combinations of two start and end stations So that means our space complexity is going to be big O of P plus big O uh, sorry plus uh, S squared. So that's going to be the space complexity here, where P is going to be from this journey dictionary and represents the you know number of current active journeys at any point in time. And then the metric journey is going to be all the possible combinations of start and end stations, where if we have S stations, then we would have S squared possible combinations here. Um, so that's going to be your time and space complexity. Hopefully you enjoyed this problem. Hopefully it was helpful for you if you are, you know, preparing for a Bloomberg interview. You know, there's a good chance you're probably going to see this question because it's their number one asked question. So they quite like this one a lot. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If there's any other videos or topics that you'd like me to make content on, please let me know in the comments section below. I'd be more than happy to make those for you. Just let me know what you want to see and I'll get back to you. Otherwise, happy coding. Bye.